Um, Dave is my zombie, and uh, in accordance with my talk title today, Dave is going to perform a few tricks for you. It really is that simple. Ah, I, I can see some concerned faces, possibly confused, but definitely concerned. So I should point out that Dave is a zombie in the philosophical sense of being a creature which, although he outwardly displays signs of consciousness, <laughs> actually he has none. He is not flesh-eating. Nobody is in any danger. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave. Okay, in hindsight, I probably should have called the talk something else. <laughs> um, um, unfortunately, backstage, Dave, someone gave Dave a very unfortunate piece of advice. Just before he came on, they said, Dave, just be yourself. <laughs> now, Dave is a zombie. He hasn't got a self. And as you can see, he appears to be taking the advice slightly too literally. Uh, I too received the same advice. They said, be yourself, Ian. Um, and I am by nature a bit of a nervous wreck, so I too appear to be taking the advice slightly literally. The advice, be yourself, should not be taken literally. What it actually means is, do not be someone else. Do not wear a mask or your audience will see through it. You'll lose their respect and trust, etc. That's good advice. I aim to show why overtly being yourself in any kind of performance situation, of which there are a multitude in everyday life, is actually a very bad idea. Um, and as a researcher of the performance mind, um, one formulation of my thesis statement was that ultimate performance requires a complete absence of self. I should therefore point out that the reason that Dave has not performed at his best today, well, He's not performed at all, really, has he, Dave? Um, it's not because he hasn't got a self now, because that could be a very good thing. It is because he never has had a self. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave has never been able to learn. Um, what is this thing called self? Um, according to Descartes, of course, it is the only thing of which we can be certain, which is um, ironic because it's very difficult to define. But Descartes very, very uh, famously said, I think, therefore I am, or je pense donc je suis, because he was French, <laughs> with, with a slight Norfolk accent. Unfortunately, despite being the most famous philosophical equation of all, argument of all time, um, it's also circular. The eye of the conclusion has already been pre-stated in and is therefore um, presupposed by its one supporting premise. So what we can do, for the sake of argument, is we can remove the eyes, and what we're essentially left with is the fact that thinking definitely exists. And for Descartes, this was enough to infer the existence of a thinker. Thought itself is slow. Thinking about thought is exponentially slow. And the danger is uh, mental paralysis and bodily petrification as it awaits a command that's not coming. Um, so, Descartes, I think, therefore, I am. Descartes, I think that it's therefore I am. Okay, the next thing. What have I got to think about? See, this is all, this is all like research for me. Um, I'm not really very good with actual performance. Um, I just study it theoretically. There are two types of knowledge, procedural knowledge and declarative knowledge. I have a lot of declarative knowledge. Um, no 
performance knowledge. You might be thinking, what is he going on about? You might be thinking um, how disappointed you were in Dave's performance today. Dave? Um, you might be thinking, why doesn't he shave it off? <laughs> yeah. You did think that, didn't you? Everybody does. Oh, reasonable. But it doesn't matter what you're thinking. If you're thinking something, uh, you definitely exist, which is brilliant. Unfortunately, of course, our thoughts are invisible. We see people, not persons. We see bodies, and those bodies at any given time are potential zombies uh, acting with absence of self. Uh, just as a as a as a illustration, hands up if you came by car today. Okay, uh, keep your hands up if you were driving. Okay, put your hands down. What I'm going to suggest is that you're not all being completely honest with yourselves or about yourselves, because the chances are that for at least a portion of that journey, um, you were being chauffeured by your personal zombie while you attended to other matters. Uh, I can tell you now that I was chauffeured by my personal zombie for the entire journey this morning, uh, but she's sitting in the audience. <laughs> and she doesn't like to be called my personal zombie. So in the interests of the return journey, we will move on. Let's take a look at some research. Um, if we can have the research slide. Oh, no, it's a performance. Let's look at performance. P equals P minus I. You might, this is a, an equation you might be familiar with. It's from the Inner Game series of books, and it refers to the fact that performance, or the quality of performance, is equal to potential, uh, which is raised by practice and rehearsal, etc., minus interference. Now... This is very poignant at this point. I wasn't expecting it to be this poignant, but it is quite poignant. <laughs> because the interference in this kind of situation is actually being provided by you. <laughs> you are all interfering with me. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> of course, it makes perfect evolutionary sense for us to fear scrutiny. If I was to look up in the woods or the plains and see 300 pairs of eyes staring back at me, it would make perfect sense for the fight or flight response to kick in and oh, I should want to get out of there. And that kind of fight or flight response always tries to override conscious thought because conscious thought provides a very slow call to action. D consciousness is not a tool for performance. Another thing about standing up here, which I've just discovered, by the way, is the fact that you are all making me very self-conscious. Now, having established that self is akin to thought and that thought is very slow, thinking about thought is exponentially slow. So, let's take a look at a little bit of research um, which, will back, which will back that up. Okay, these are brain scans from uh, John Milton and his team at the University of uh, Chicago. And they scan, scan, uh, scanned the brains of golfers uh, while they mentally went through their pre-shot routines. Now, what strikes me the most about these images is that uh, just how much the mind of a professional golfer resembles that of a zombie. Do we have any golfers in the audience today? No. Okay, so while we're waiting for a response from the golfers, <laughs> it could be some time. Um, I should point out that it's not just them. Uh, Vanessa May, for instance, had her brain scanned while uh, at the University of Sheffield, first while playing normally right-handed, and then while playing, simulating a novice left-handed. And the, the discrepancy between those scans uh, was similar to what we see with the golfers. It does seem, seem that expert expertise and brain activity are inversely proportional. Um, the mind of a novice uh, does have a lot more to contend with. 
Um, learning a new skill, like playing a guitar or anything else, is rather like having to take a machete into a jungle to, to carve yourself a path. Um, at first, progress is very slow, it's necessarily slow, but the more you travel the path, the easier it becomes, until eventually you can just roll down the path with very little effort whatsoever. So what I'm doing here is what a guitarist would refer to as being mindless noodling. And it is mindless because I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, and if I was thinking about what I'm doing, I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, it should be obvious that I'm not consciously engaged with what my fingers are doing. Um, one, because they're moving too fast to be taking conscious direction. And two, because I am talking to you. And we all know that men can't multitask. <laughs> so, what I believe you have witnessed here is my, the unconscious action of a consciously pre-programmed body. You were watching my zombie perform. Now, you could argue that it wasn't a very musical performance and that in order to impart musicality, I would have to employ myself. And that's absolutely true. It actually fascinates me the way it becomes a lot harder to communicate with you when I'm playing something musical like this, even though it's far simpler. But then I can flurry through this without any problem whatsoever and I could have a conversation about anything and I wouldn't be playing a wrong note. It's fascinating. Um, so what does this mean for educators? Well, one, that... Um, that equation, P equals P minus I, is an extremely important one for educators. Uh, we tend to spend too long trying to raise potential, not enough time trying to reduce interference. And reducing interference is a matter of raising self-confidence, and raising self-confidence is a performance matter. So m that is one reason why music and the performing arts in general should not be sold as a mere entertainment. Raising confidence releases potential in all aspects of life. In fact, that equation is so important that what I suggest you do is you go home and you phone your friends and you ask them if they've heard of PPI. And be, pre <laughs> be prepared to be persistent, okay? It's important. Secondly, as music educators, you are designing human beings of the future. I've talked a little bit, <laughs> scatterly, about self and separation. That is the future. Uh, for example, if we could just have the last slide, uh, the, um, the University of Melbourne announced only last month the invention of something called a stentrode, which is a device which can easily be implanted into the brains of paralysed patients and allows them to control an exoskeleton by thought alone. For the first time in the history of mankind, this should have a musical backing, for the first time in the history of mankind, we are exiting our bodies and we are entering a whole new era of mechanical zombie. It probably is time to start thinking differently about ourselves. Thank you. Give it up. Not for Dave, this is for Dave, ladies and gentlemen. It's not, it's not for me, I'm sorry.